Hi everyone, today I will show you how you can easily create text translation tool that can translate a text into any language using artificial intelligence. You will be able to pass your text from a Word document into your application and then your application will automatically translate this text to any language you want. We will use the most simple Python tool for creating applications called TKinter. We will add a drop-down menu where you can add literally any language in the world to which you want to translate. And finally, I will show you a very simple automation how to use the ChatGPT API to translate your text and how to integrate that with the Microsoft Word Python kit in order to read Word files in your application. So this is what we're going to be doing today. And now let's get started. Today we're going to talk about a different implementation of the ChatGPT APIs. Uh, comparing to what we studied so far and this will be for building desktop applications of course depending on what type of application you create you have a different business model right when you're building your app uh, in the desktop applications it is very common that you would pay some price let's say in the app store or uh, google play store or wherever to uh, download the desktop application or they could be also you can actually also charge the users while they're using your desktop application as well okay uh, and of course the way that we're building uh, desktop applications is a little bit different we use different frameworks when comparing to web applications actually in my opinion it is a little bit simpler to build uh, desktop applications comparing to uh, web applications, to be honest. Uh, and why do I think this? Well, this is because the frameworks used for building desktop applications, specifically in Python, uh, usually don't separate front-end and back-end. Uh, you would see from the frameworks that we're going to use, and we're actually going to use the most simple uh, Python framework for that, tkinter. How many of you heard of this type of framework? Okay, you've heard the rest? You've heard? Yeah? Okay. Yeah, so this is a very simple built-in Python framework. We even don't need to install absolutely any new library. It's already there. Um, and the reason why I'm using this type of uh, framework is first for you to see how easy it is to build actual desktop applications with Python and second that will actually help us to shift the focus on the uh, actual ChatGPT APIs okay um, so as I said the fact that we don't need to uh, use any front end such as HTML CSS and so on has its advantages and disadvantages the advantage is that we need to write way less code uh, we don't need to have a significant separation of the files, right? And we work with less programming languages. We work actually only with one, with Python. The disadvantage, of course, is that um, since you're using uh, one framework without a front end, of course, the design of your application is you're not going to have actually that many opportunities to uh, do some design that is appealing to the users, right? Since this is a basic uh, desktop application. Uh, there are also other um, desktop frameworks that you can use. For example, uh, there is PyQt, okay? Um, and there you have a little bit more options. But by learning TKinter, you're also, it's also going to be easier for you to build applications with the PyQt as well, because they're quite similar. To, hello, come in here, yeah, no problem. What are we actually going to do and uh, how we can build desktop applications with ChatGPT and what's the whole idea? Why do we need to build applications, uh, I mean desktop applications, with ChatGPT? Uh, one of the main reasons that you want to build your own desktop applications is to integrate ChatGPT with other uh, functionalities, frameworks and so on. That way, you can create a very optimized application for specific task that you want to complete, okay, and run it on your own desktop, right? Um, 
so here are two examples let's say if you want to integrate ChatGPT with <coughs> Outlook you can uh, use the OpenAI API and integrate it with the Win32.com uh, Python library okay if you want to integrate uh, ChatGPT with Word so uh, let's say you want to create some text for ChatGPT and then automatically save it in a Word document uh, you can use Python docx, right? So for example, let's say if you want to create an app that builds cover letters uh, from a uh, text, right? You can actually create an application that passes your request to ChatGPT, ChatGPT generates the cover letter and finally it saves it in a Word file. That way you're going to save plenty of time, okay? And you can create multiple cover letters. And finally, uh, this is going to be the application that we will build today. So, uh, today we're going to build a simple uh, language translation application uh, using the ChatGPT API, TKinter, and also the Python docx library. Okay, so now we're going to start building the application. Uh, before that, any questions? No questions, everything is clear. Okay, that's good. All right. Uh, so, you know, as always, you can uh, create a new PyCharm project like we do every time. Okay, set up your virtual environment. Uh, and then we're going to start building our uh, new application. Okay. So, uh, as you can see here, I'm creating a new uh, PyCharm project, right? Click Create. All right. Uh, and this is your new project, okay? So, as always, no different from any other project that we have. You can now install OpenAI. And uh, I will also show you how to install the Python docx library too. Okay? So, any problems until you reach to this stage? I think by now, everybody's pretty much all set, right? Okay. Uh, okay, so let's do pipe. Okay, firstly, uh, you just need to make sure that you're into your virtual environment right here. Okay. So, if you're not, you can just activate it. Uh, now, let's do pipe install. Open AI. And then pipe install python dash docx. Okay. So after that, I'll do the steps a little bit more quickly. So, yes. Uh, yeah. So it's called. Uh, Python docx. Uh, let me just go up. Say again. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course, yeah. I understand what you mean. Yeah. So it's uh, Python dash docx. Okay. Should I write here? Okay, all set with the package? Yeah? yeah? Okay. Uh, now, after that, I'm going to create a new Python file. Na I will name it config.py. Okay. And then I'll put here the API key like we do every time. I will just copy it from Blackboard. Now, once we cover the basics, uh, now we can start building our project. Okay. Uh, 
And just before that, so you're saying that pretty much for every project we start with exactly the same steps, right? So um, I hope that this repetition will make you to really uh, remember those steps, right? So for every project in the future, you even don't need to check and you know exactly what to do, right? For every AI project, you can start with those steps literally every time, okay? And after that, this will make sure that everything else works in your Python project, okay? Okay, so now let's first uh, import all the libraries that we need. So I will do from OpenAI import OpenAI. Okay, after that I will import docx. Then I will also import the Actually, I will do from tk inter import tk. Is it visible? The yeah, I know. Okay, once we start using them, they will lighten up, so you, you will be able to see them better. Um, okay, so after that, I will um, do from tk inter import file dialog. Okay, um, and actually, here the previous line, I don't want to import this class, so I'll actually do import tk inter as tk. Okay, okay, and finally, I will import the config file. That's it. Okay. So once we are done with that, I will do client equals to open AI and here in the uh, brackets I will put the API key. So I will do API key equals to config dot API key. All right. Okay. So. Once we're done with that, we're going to create our uh, TK inter application. So I'll write root equals to TK dot TK. And after that, I will do root dot title. And here I will put the title of our application. So you can put whatever title you like. But in this case, I will put text. translator okay since our application is going to translate text uh, then I'll do root dot configure and I'll put a white background so I will do bg equals white okay um, and actually here I'm going to write the last line, actually we're going to keep this line last, which is the one that is actually running our application. So I'll do root dot main loop, okay? So I think even now if I run it, you should be able to see something here, okay. Okay, so once you complete those lines, uh, please click the play button and make sure that you're actually seeing uh, this window appearing, okay? And so once you make sure that uh, you have this window, uh, then we're going to sort of start putting elements into the window, okay? This is the whole idea. All right. <clears throat> now
Now, maybe I should wait a bit. Okay, so um, let's continue. Now, uh, since we don't have, as I said, front end here, we will define some design parameters straight in the application. Of course, you will need to write again way less code comparing to if you would need to create the whole HTML file, right? As it's in the case of the uh, web applications. So uh, let's start. So first, I will create a variable called header font. Header font. Okay, and um, this will be equal to. Firstly, I will define the font, so it's going to be open sans. Okay, then the size of the letters will be 16, and also we want the text in bold. Okay, and later I will pass this variable uh, to our header. Okay, so we don't write this directly there. Okay, now I will create the header variable. So header will be equal to tk dot label. And here I will write root, which is our application. Okay, then I will do comma, uh, text, and the text will be equal to text translator, okay, then I'll set again the background to white, okay, <coughs> and finally the font will be equal to the font that we just created right here, okay, so this is our font, okay, now uh, we're going to add some parameters for the positioning of our header as well. So I will do header dot grid. Okay. So we we'll have only one row. So I will do row equal to zero. Column equal to zero. Column span will be equal to two. And then the padding will be 20. Okay, so this is just for positioning. Even if I don't add this, our application will still work. It's just that not going to have the best design. Okay. <clears throat> now, after that, we're going to create one of the important elements in our app. And this will be the button with which we browse the files. Okay. So, I'll create a new variable here. Okay. So, let's create a new variable and it will be closed browse button. Okay. And here we'll create a new button. So, to create a new button in TK Enter, you need to write TK dot button okay and then in the parentheses i'm going to uh, define the parameters or how this button is going to be displayed so firstly i write here root since it's going to be in our application right here that holds this name okay hey guys here yeah, come in Okay. Then the text in our button, let's check the design, right? We have a design of our application. So the text in our button is going to be browse. Okay, so I write here browse. Then uh, the color of the button, you can choose any type of color, of course. Um, I have a specific color code that I will use. I think it's a shade of gray. So the code is um, 
four to six seven eight two okay so because I don't want uh, you not to understand what those numbers means right uh, if you need to pick a color you can do that from Google actually I can just do color picker tool okay and here from Google uh, you can select the color that you like for the applications then move this dot here and you can see this is the hex representation of the color okay so this is how I pick my color so I don't make these numbers up uh, right I just decide from here the colors that I like and then I copy them into uh, my application you can do that for any type of application it's a very good tool and simple okay okay so then I will create as a block you can also define other parameters like border width so I will do border width in this case I will make it equal to zero you can make other device uh, so I mean you can make another number here uh, and also in the buttons right you have usually two colors one of them is when the button is displayed to you while the other type of color is when you click on the button right so you need to define this as well right what's gonna be the color when you click on it so here I will do uh, okay. uh, active background okay and here I will select another color so this will be 4 to 6 let's say 7 8 3 for example okay then let's do active foreground let's do white okay uh, and finally it's the most important parameter for your button and this is the function that this button is going to run okay so uh, why desktop applications are so simple this is because you can easily create a button in that way even if you don't define those design parameters that's okay uh, but here you can just pass the function that you want this button to run and then write the function in Python and once you click the button this specific function function in Python will run okay so here I write command okay um, and I write browse file you see that function in red because we haven't created it yet but later on we're going to create the function and then you're going to um, actually use it right actually so everything works when we test it out uh, here before defining the root of the application I will actually create a function so I will do def then the name of the function okay and then I will do pass that way I don't get errors when I create a function but um, I can have it created so my application is able to run even without it <coughs> all right so now we can add some configuration to our button so let's do browse button dot config and here we can add the font of the text in the button uh, also we can add the width and the height okay so I will do here font equals okay and here I will define the font Arial again 12 and bold okay then I will define the width which is going to be 10 and the height that is going to be equal to 2 okay after that we can also define the uh, button grid so how it's going to be positioned on our screen uh, and you can do that by doing browse button dot grid and just in the same way like before we will define a row so it's going to be on the first on the first row we have a column 
so zero column uh, then we're going to add some uh, padding on the x directions which is going to be 20 and also some padding on the y directions which is also going to be 20 okay and this is how you're done with the button okay uh, also here when I wrote the foreground I did a typo it's black and as you can see this is how your application currently looks this is the button when I hit it nothing happens right it just changes the background when I hit it but obviously our function is not activated because uh, it just has the pass keyword there so nothing would happen okay so uh, once we are done with our browse button how is it going there did it work okay uh, so once we're done with the browse button the next step is going to build our two other elements right um, and the first one is the drop down menu with the languages okay and then the second one is the text field which is obviously more simple so let's first build the languages right the languages drop down so it's very easy to build a drop down in the tk enter first i'll create a variable called languages okay and here i will create a list and here i will create the languages that i like to have in my application okay and we can create them as strings so i have my languages here feel free to choose whatever languages that you like or you're interested in translating okay so what i chose is since i'm originally from bulgaria bulgarian okay then i chose hindi okay then i chose spanish okay and finally french okay so my application will have those languages your application might have something else okay so now once we have this list now we need to create the drop down menu okay and i'll create here a variable so it will be called languages underscore var okay uh, and this will be called tk dot string var and then i write here root then let's do languages var dot set okay and now i will set the text that will be displayed will be the first text in my list okay so language zero is bulgarian after that i will create now the languages menu which will be our actual drop down menu so i will do here languages menu equals to tk dot option menu and then here i write root languages variable okay and star languages okay so what we're going to do here is we're going to create a new drop down menu which is going to be in our application so in the root it will display it in, display initially our uh, language variable right here that will have the language bulgarian uh, and also once we click on it it will display everything from our languages list okay and after that we just need to do some configuration okay so i will actually just copy it from the other file because i want to save some time i advise to do the same because we already know how to do um configurations so i just go here okay so what we do here we just configure the font the width uh and how it's going to be displayed inside our window right something that we already did pretty much this is our front end those two lines of code 
for this particular element. The initial lines were the functionality of our element. Now, after that, we're going to create the uh, text field, okay? And this is also quite simple. So let's create a new variable called text underscore field equals to tk dot tk actually tk dot text and now here I write a root and also uh, you can again copy this from blackboard I don't mind because this is again going to be the height the width the colors and so on and this is what I will do here okay so I'll just come here and copy the rest so you can see here we set the height the width the background the foreground the relief the border width and the wrap defines pretty much what type of uh, information is going to be inside so in our case it's going to be words okay and after that again we're going to define the grid as well all right so now if I run the application you can see that now we have all the buttons needed right so we have the languages right here, the menu, we have the button that when we click it nothing happens and we also have the text field where we can edit. I will leave the option for us to be able to edit the text field and this is because if the translation is not entirely correct uh, we can actually edit the text before copying it. Now below I'm adding some additional lines for configuring the window, right? Uh, they will not change much the outcome, but I will just add them for consistency. So I will do text field dot grid column configure, okay? And this will help us for when we resize the window so we're more concise and the elements doesn't just move around. So I'll write here zero comma weight 1 okay so this is for the text field and then let's add some configuration for our window so I will do grid row configure 2 then weight is going to be 1 then root dot grid column configure is going to be 0 the weight is going to be 1 and finally root dot grid underscore column configure 1 and weight is going to be uh, 1 as well here okay So this is some additional configuration for our window and with this uh, pretty much the display of our application is completed. Okay, So as you can see when I run it everything looks good, right? When we resize it you can see that elements always stay in the middle which is what we want. Uh, maybe as an additional task would be uh, the text area to get resized with the window right because you can see that when expanded it stays the same okay but of course this is not the main topic of our exercise but it's a good also a good feature that we can add okay so uh, now once we have the actual window created now we can start building the functions right for uh, translating the text and for browsing the file so the front end we already have. Okay, so now um, firstly I will create the uh, browse file function. Okay, since this is what we call right here. And after that, so the idea is that firstly we browse the uh, word file, and after that 
we send the text from the Word file to ChatGPT and then we generate the translation. Okay, so let's do that. Firstly, I will do file location equals to file dialog, the function that we imported from tkinter. This is a function used for us to assess files. Okay, so file dialog dot ask open file name. Okay, and with this option, this will allow us to open a new window with all of our files. And after that, we will be able to select one of the files located in our computer. Okay, uh, now here we can send some parameters, right? So, for example, we can set the initial directory. Okay, and if you put backslash here. It, it will send you initially in the first directory of your project, which is important, so you don't need to search that much if your file is there, the one that you need. Now, after that, okay, we can set a title of the window that appears. So let's say here, select file, okay? And finally, which is something very important, when you create a file dialog is to define what file types are going to appear as active right so you know from the rest of the programs that you use uh, sometimes if you need to select the file only the files that you can select and that you need are highlighted because if all files are highlighted imagine you select a file that is not a word document right that way you're going to get an error and we don't want that so let's do file types okay and here I'll create uh, this list here and we're going to write word files comma okay uh, and here I'll do plus doc x actually plus dot doc x okay so every file that ends with doc x is going to appear as active okay and after that let's say uh, if you want to be able to select other types of files you know you can add them here right in another one so Let's say, if I want all files, right, let's imagine there is any other type of file. You can just do dot star, right? In our case, we don't really need that. I will just add, the, add it there, so all the files appear as active. But normally, if you want only the docx files, or also you want PDF files, let's say, you can do here, for example, dot PDF as well. That way you cannot add multiple file types. Excuse me, Mark. Yes. Like yeah, you yeah. can also add Excel, yes. I mean, in our situation, if you add Excel when you select it, uh, you'll get an error or you'll get a rubbish data, right? Uh, but if you use TKinter for any other type of application, you can define wherever you like, okay? All the file. So if you want to select Excel, I think you need to write... Uh, X L X yes exactly exactly so you can do that okay uh, and here it's another star right so file starts however we like and it ends however we like okay so uh, once we define the file location now we need to use it right so I will do if file location so if the user selects a file Okay, then something should happen, right? Uh, the main thing that should happen is that we take the text from the file and send it to ChatGPT. So let's do this. Firstly, I'm going to create a variable called target language. Okay, and the target language will be equal to language var dot 
get and put your attention here so this is a way with which you can extract information from every element in tkinter right so in our language variable we're going to hold the single language that we selected now we want to take this language and pass it to our browse file function so we're going to define the name of the variable and use the get function for that pretty simple this is why I'm saying the tkinter is very simple um, application to work with okay now let's do translated text and this will be equal to okay so uh, here I'm going to actually use a translate text function so I will do translate text obviously you're getting an error here since this function is not created yet and this will be the function with which we uh, contact the chat GPT API so I'll write it here right so I'll do translate text def okay and pass and later we're going to build this function too so translated text will be equal to translate text um, and this function is going to take a few uh, parameters so in order for us to translate text firstly we need uh, the file location okay the word file location and after that we also need the language to which we want to translate so, so target language okay now once uh, we do that what we want is to clear the text field that we have on the application and put the new text there so I will do text field dot delete okay and inside I'm going to put one dot zero tk dot end and this will make sure that we delete the text until the end right until the last letter and finally I will do text field dot insert okay until the end okay and what do we want to insert here come on guys what do you think the, the what the okay uh, yes in which variable is that text that's good good start yes what do we want to put here okay which one is that variable correct yes the translated text right so the translated text will take the response from chat GPT from this function okay and it will hold our translated text okay and as you can see we're going to put it here now you see those warnings right here because this function as you can see doesn't have yet the parameters um, doesn't have parameters to pass as an input but we're going to change that okay so here of course I'll create locally to the function the parameters file location and target language okay all right and uh, actually let me see if we can run that okay so now when I hit browse as you can see now I can browse through my files okay so let's say you can also download this from uh, blackboard right uh, but I will actually use the file from here so if I use okay. so see I have a file right here that is a word file and actually you can see that I don't see this file as available which means that uh, I need to do some modification in the file types that um, 
I selected in the application, right? So I will need to fix that. But you should be able to select this file and then run it through the application, okay? So let's see. Yeah, so here I wrote plus instead of star. And this is my mistake. So once I remove that, okay, and I go to here. And you can see that the file is now available, right? So if I click open, you can see that nothing happens and I actually get an error, right? Um, and the reason is because we haven't yet created our function. Okay? And now this is what we're going to do next. We're going to create the translate text function. And obviously this function is the one that will um, get the text and send it to the chat GPT API. Okay? So let's do that. Now, in the translate text function, I will create a new file called doc. Actually, first of all, are you able to browse through the files? Yeah? Nice. There? Are you able to browse? How are you doing there, guys? Okay, you look very focused, so let's see. Okay. So now, guys, uh, first of all, any questions, any issues? Okay. So now, guys, the last step, of course, the most exciting one, which is us communicating with the uh, chat GPT API and actually getting our translation to the application, right? So, as I said, here in this function, we'll create the uh, Word document, right? So we need to pass the Word document as a variable in our code if we want to use it, right? So I will do doc equals... And here we're going to use the docx library dot document. And after that, we are going to pass our file location. Okay. That way, we're going to pick the file from there and assign it to our doc variable. Once we do that, let's create another variable, text. And later, we're going to append the text from the uh, doc file to our text variable so we can have it in our script. Okay. So, we're going to take each paragraph from the doc document in that way. So, I'm going to say for para in doc dot paragraph paragraphs Oh, here is doc, sorry. Okay. Okay. Uh, so for each paragraph in the text, what we want to do is to uh, append it to our text variable right here. Okay. So you can do that in a very easy way with Python, so you can I can write text plus equals to para dot text. Okay, so what we do here for each paragraph from the text, uh, from for, for each paragraph from the Word document, we take the text of that paragraph and we append it to the text. Plus equals means that uh, on the top of the previous text, I'm adding the next one. Okay. All right, so now we have uh, the complete text from our Word document. What is the next step? Okay, I'll try to give you a hint. So now here we have, um, actually here, we have our target language. Okay, for example, Spanish. Okay, here we have the text that we want to translate. So we have the language, we have the text, the language, the text. So the next job that we need to do is we send to ChatGPT exactly yeah this is the next step 
So let's do that. So I will do model engine will be cool. And here I'm going to specify the model. So I will do GPT dash 3.5 dash turbo. Okay. Then we're going to take the response just like any other time. So response equals client dot chat dot completions dot create. Okay. And here we're going to pass all the parameters that we always do. So firstly, I will pass the model. So model equals to model engine. Then the messages, okay, uh, to save time, I'm just going to copy them from the code in Blackboard. Okay, so those are the messages, right? Okay, and let's see what we do here. So first of all, I prepare a chat GPT that uh, he is going to be a translator. So I'm saying, you're a professional language translator. Befo below, I will ask you to translate text. Uh, I expect from you to give me the correct translation. Can you help me with that? Okay. And then, ChatGPT says yes, I can help you with that. And after that, I ask ChatGPT to translate the following text. And I say, translate the following text in. After that, I will pass the uh, target language. Okay. And after that, I will pass the text. Okay. So, once we do that, and we pass the messages and the model, I'm not going to add any other parameters. I'm not going to limit ChatGPT to the number of tokens since we have a specific text that we sent to it, okay? Um, actually, here is response. Response. Uh, and after ChatGPT replies to us, we will have the translated text into our response, okay? So, the final step is just to take it from there. So, I will do translated language equals to response dot choices at position zero message dot content and this will be our translated text okay and finally I'm just going to return the translated uh, text section. I don't know why I wrote language. Text. Text. Okay. So, yes, this variable here will have our translated text. And down here, Okay, the translated text that comes out of this application will go into the browse file function, okay, and then it will be printed right here. Okay. So now let's run the application and see. Okay, so I'll select Spanish. I will browse. Okay, I will take this file. I will open it. Okay, and now let's see. So, you see here, we have our text translated in Spanish. Okay, so here is a text, I can just 
copy it and just use it okay so we created something similar to uh, Google Translator right of course um, you can expand your application even more by adding more languages here you can add another drop-down menu for language languages to translate to and from okay and pretty much all other features that you can imagine you can also add a button where you can save the text in another word file okay okay guys so uh, this was the app for today right I hope you enjoyed it and you learned uh, something new right how to use TK Inter <coughs> integrated with ChatGPT and also integrated with the uh, Microsoft Python docx library okay uh, now another topic I want to uh, talk with you about uh, is some something brand new that just came one week ago and just want to share with you if you heard something about it okay so have you heard OpenAI also uh, is going to release last week they uh, re released the initial page uh, for a new API that will be able to generate videos from text oh, yeah. You heard about it? Sorry. Yeah, exactly, yes. So, um, I don't know when they're gonna release the API, okay? Uh, but if they release it, uh, if you're lucky and they release it before the end of the class, I will also try to uh, create some project on that, okay? So you can really be like the cutting, cutting cage of technology, right? Uh, and I think it's going to be I really, um, is, I think if this works in the way they say, it's going to be really a big game changer for a lot of industries, right? So if you start thinking for how to build applications with that app, maybe integrate it also with ChatGPT or other tools, it's very useful to create like stock footages. Uh, you can create, let's say, a YouTube channel or Instagram channel with... Uh, reels videos right uh, and so on so it's uh, it's very exciting times we're living in right all right so you heard about it have you watched like some of the videos that this app can generate okay uh how many of you actually watch the videos that this app can generate you watch yeah, something Okay, how about the rest of you? you ha do you want to see some of those? Yeah. Would Jamie you watch? Okay, so, uh, you know, so far I think it was uh, like one year ago or something when they started generating, you know, those deep fake videos and uh, actually put AI into generating videos, right? And they were looking like pretty bad and in most of them you can say they are fake. But imagine you just write a text and you can create something very realistic. So, see for example, um, how it was called, Sora? Yeah. Yeah, just I want to give you some heads up. Yeah, for example, see this one? So this is like completely AI generated, right? So what they wrote, they simply wrote uh, create a woman that is walking in Tokyo uh, and there is light reflection, okay? So this is the only thing you need to do and then you get this, right? Pretty amazing. Uh, I think there, there was also, for example, you say, I want to generate a, tra a trailer for a movie, right? That go to another planet and those are artificial generated people everything drone footages as well like for example if you want to if you don't want to spend money or to buy drone you can just say generate me drone footages animations right very detailed videos right here as you can see okay there was also one with okay it's not here see pirate ships I think in a coffee cup in this for example a guy reading a book on a cloud right it looks very real yes it's crazy so if they actually release this and everybody is able to do that 
is going to be a very very big thing just want to give you a heads up to see if you haven't seen it yet just to see what things they are building also you can check in uh, I think in the open AI account in YouTube they are posting even more videos like this like for example they wrote create three puppies playing together right and it's like very detailed it's shocking okay so I'll keep you posted about this if they release the API I will try to do something with the API some simple project so you see um, how it works don't have very high hopes because I think they release it now and then maybe after one year they're gonna actually put the API uh, but yeah let's see all right